Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're talking about Super 8 sound cameras. Now, one of the most important things before I kind of delve into this topic to know is that Super 8 sound cameras and sound film is obsolete. But that doesn't mean that the cameras are completely obsolete. It just means that the sound components are. So that's really important to kind of keep in mind if you're hoping to use these kinds of cameras to record sound onto your film, because you can't. So Super 8, of course, is a simple, fun, easy to shoot and use little format. And the cameras are usually not too crazy to kind of get into and play around with. And they record only pictures when you're actually rolling your film through them. That means no talking movies. You're kind of stuck with only focusing on the picture when you're actually recording Super 8 in these cameras. Any sort of sound has to be done separately or afterwards. Super 8 cameras are typically non-sync cameras, which means that they kind of move at an inconsistent frame rate just slightly, which means that it's hard to perfectly sync up audio even if you're recording it on a dedicated second audio recorder. Now, in terms of using like video editing programs, you can kind of adjust the speed of your footage or even your audio and try and kind of play around and sync things up a little bit more. But for the most part, if you're trying to just perfectly sync things up, it gets a little awkward. So sound and Super 8 is not exactly something that works really well together all of the time. Now Kodak introduced Super 8 as a format in the 1960s when they launched these little cartridges full of film and the cameras that took them. And these are the same cartridges that you can buy today. But just because working with digitally recorded audio and digital transfers of film footage is a little bit awkward now, doesn't mean that in the past there wasn't a way that involved using Super 8 and audio together in an analog workflow. See, after this format and these cameras had kind of been around for a few years, Kodak decided that it was time to get sound on film and introduced the Ektasound system in 1973. Now, what I have here is uh, the Ektasound movie making case. And these are early Sound Super 8 cameras that were introduced initially by Kodak, but eventually a number of other manufacturers started making Sound Super 8 cameras as well. Both kind of low-end, cheaper ones, as well as higher-end ones with kind of full manual control over exposure and just a wide variety of options and higher quality. But how exactly did Sound on Super 8 film work? Well, that is luckily the topic of this video. So inside the Ektasound uh, case, we have an Ektasound uh, Kodak Sound Super 8 camera, which is gonna stand upside down. And we have a microphone, and I actually have an old, pretty expired, now useless roll of Super 8 sound film. Now let's start with the film. So Super 8 sound film is still Super 8 film. It's the same size, it has the same kind of perforations, still pretty much works the exact same way. This is a cartridge of Super 8 film in this plastic cartridge with the film at the front, but this is a cartridge of Super 8 sound film and it still has the film at the front, but you'll notice that it's actually taller than the cartridge of normal Super 8 film. And this allows for a segment at the bottom of the sound cartridge that actually has some exposed film moving past it as well. This extra opening at the bottom allows for the sound components of the camera to make contact with the sound components of the film in the cartridge. If I pull out a little bit of Super 8 film from the cartridge here, just regular Super 8 film, we can see just kind of how it looks. And I mean, this film has been exposed, so it's ruined at this point, but you can see the emulsion side, which is the area that would capture the actual image in your camera. And then you can see the other side, which is the base of the film. Now, if we look at sound Super 8 film, there's something that is a little bit different here. If we look at the base side of the film, then we can see that there are two strips running either side of the film that are slightly different color. This is magnetic audio recording tape. So kind of like a cassette tape. And Super 8 sound cameras would have audio components inside of them that would record audio through microphone inputs on the camera onto the magnetic audio recording tape of the Super 8 film itself. So the Super 8 sound film has two strips and the one strip running down the far side of the film opposite side of the perforations is the main soundtrack that audio would be recorded onto through a Super 8 sound camera. Now the smaller strip down the other side of the film actually acts as a bit of a balance strip. And it works to kind of add a little bit of extra weight to both sides of the film. But that second strip of film can actually be used in certain sound projectors that could actually record onto the secondary soundtrack of the Super 8 film. So Super 8 sound cameras are of course different from regular Super 8 cameras because the 
inside film compartment of these Super 8 cameras allows for you to put in these taller cartridges. And they also have recording heads inside of the film compartment. So this area just at the very bottom of a Super 8 sound camera film compartment is a recording head. And as film runs over it, then it will record onto the magnetic audio soundtrack that's stripped onto one side of the film. It means that you can take these sound cartridges and pop them into sound cameras. And that bottom area will just kind of slot over top of the recording area. So the picture and the audio of the Super 8 sound film stays in sync because it's all happening within the camera. It's being determined by the motor that's moving the audio audio and the picture at the same time and capturing everything all at once. So this camera actually comes with this microphone and it's just like a normal little old school microphone that you would usually be able to also get for like old school tape recorders and other pieces of equipment from around that time. It's nothing really special or very like high quality, but you would just be able to plug it into sockets on the side of your sound Super 8 camera. And then as you were recording footage, then you would also be recording audio. So suddenly you were making home movies with actual audio on them. The audio and the picture were all locked together just on on that one piece of film inside the cartridge that you were running through your beautiful Ektasound Super 8 camera, or maybe not necessarily the Ektasound. The Ektasound and a bunch of the other models similar to it are not necessarily the highest quality Super 8 cameras out there. They kind of lack a lot of features like frame rate control or exposure control, but that doesn't mean there weren't actually really high quality sound Super 8 cameras that existed. There were a lot of higher end Super 8 sound cameras out there like Niso models. There were also cameras out there that were released with both sound and non-sound models as well. Things like this Canon 514 XL camera has a 514 normal version and a 514 XLS version, which has audio components on the side. So again, with the Canon camera, just like the Kodak Ektasound, it just fits in like normal over top of those recording audio component heads on the bottom. And this camera actually has mic control levels or auto levels as well. So you can kind of manually control the audio volume of your sound going in. So higher end sound cameras would have had a wider variety of control on them. So in that period of time, Super 8 film was generally all reversal film, which would be shot in cameras, processed by a lab, and then projected back because it was a positive image. So all of this stuff was designed to be used in sound Super 8 projectors, which you can also get in a wide, wide variety as well. It would have a playback and recording head within the projector along the film path so that as you were watching the film, then it would also be running through a certain section of the projector that would play back the audio as well. It would also have controls on them to control volume and built-in speakers and input control, which meant that a lot of these projectors also allowed you to record audio onto the soundtrack of your film. So you could either record over top of the existing audio that was captured when you shot it in the camera, or as I said before, you could record onto that secondary strip of film and have a secondary audio track playing back on the film as well. Now there are a lot of sound Super 8 projectors out there and you can get some higher end models and ones for example, like the Elmo ST1200 and the Bauer T502 are projectors that have a wider variety of audio control on them and also are just higher quality projectors. So because of the design of the cartridge, the image is actually captured on the side of the cartridge, and then the sound that you're recording at the same time as that is captured at the bottom of the cartridge. So there is an 18 frame difference between the image that you're capturing and the sound that goes along with it. So the frame on the film and the audio rate beside it on the magnetic soundtrack are not perfectly in sync with each other. The actual audio for the image that you're seeing is further along the film. And that was Super 8 sound film. And it actually existed for several decades. It was introduced in 1973 and sound film was still made up until 1997 when Kodak discontinued it. And why did they discontinue it? Well, they cited environmental regulations that prevented them from being able to use the adhesive that attached the magnetic sound tape onto the film itself. So in terms of getting those larger cartridges with the built-in soundtrack on them, you can't do that anymore. These tall cartridges with sound that's actually built into the film 
are no longer made, and nobody is making that kind of thing anymore. The film that you buy today is all this normal, silent Super 8 film that is inside these shorter cartridges. Does that mean that all of these sound Super 8 cameras, even the nicer, higher quality ones, are all just obsolete now? No, it doesn't. See, these cameras were designed with these audio recording components on the bottom of the film compartment in order to accommodate these larger sound cartridges of Super 8 film that were being made at the time. But all of these sound Super cameras are still compatible with modern Super 8 film cartridges that you can still buy. The non-sound ones that are silent and shorter. They will still easily fit into these film compartments on these sound cameras. They just won't cover the bottom area that is the recording head for the magnetic soundtrack, which they don't have anyways. So a lot of these sound Super 8 cameras are kind of old and bulky and not necessarily the best because they're just kind of made to be able to cash in on the existing sound Super 8 film, which again, does not exist anymore. So there are a lot of these models that are worth avoiding just because they're cheap cameras. But some of these nicer ones, the higher end ones, the Canon ones, or the Nitzo ones, are still perfectly fine, good, usable cameras with the ability to shoot modern Super 8 film stocks that you can still buy today from Kodak. So if you happen to pick up a sound Super 8 camera today and you're trying to figure out if you can use it, the answer is yes. But you can't use it to the full potential that it was designed to be used like 30 or 40 years ago. Sound Super 8 cameras cameras can no longer capture audio onto Super 8 film because it doesn't have that magnetic audio strip on it anymore. But you can still use it for normal Super 8 film. Now, if you're taking some of this even a few steps further and you're actually collecting or buying Super 8 film prints, there are things like select scenes from movies that you can get that have an audio soundtrack on them that you can run through sound projectors and be able to listen to. Now, beyond these old school, now obsolete sound cartridges with the sound built into them, there were some cameras out there that were designed to be used with secondary audio recorders and had special inputs on the camera bodies themselves, which meant that you could record film inside the camera and then audio onto a separate recorder that was attached to the camera and then have it all sync up later on. But that is a topic for another time. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out. And if there's stuff that you want to see in the future, whether it's different topics or examples of different film stocks that you guys want to see as well on the channel, then you can comment down below on any of the videos and let me know about stuff that you want to see. There is the Analog Resurgence Patreon in order to kind of help support the channel and allow me to do more of this stuff. And the link is in the description for that. So you guys can head over there and check that out if you want to. And of course, like the videos and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff in the future because there is so much more to talk about all the time. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.